Welcome traders to another Tick Mill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing 20th of September with me, Patrick Mundley. The back end of last week, markets seemingly returned to long dollar positions as markets looked again with some concern on the potential combination of monetary tightening at a time when the Delta variant spread looks likely to hinder economic recovery. Uh, some local stories have emerged. Uh, G10 FX currencies have partly shifted away from the usual risk off trades. China-US relations are also back in focus as Biden and China's President Xi spoke over the phone for the first time since February. As we enter the Fed's blackout period ahead of 22nd of September FOMC announcement, all focus in the week ahead will be on the US uh, August CPI numbers, <coughs> with economists uh, looking for slow down from 5.4 to 5.3 percent in headline inflation. Recent Fed communications have not diverged from the view that inflationary pressures have a transitory nature. So even in the event of another rise in inflation, I doubt the Fed rate expectations and by extension the dollar will be particularly impacted. Markets have likely acknowledged that the disappointing jobs figures were the most crucial piece of data before the Fed meeting and other releases in the week ahead, including industrial production, retail sales and University of Michigan sentiment may also have limited impact. I'm inclined to think that the markets may take a wait and see approach ahead of the very busy 20, 24th of September period in terms of central bank activity. So some stabilization sentiment may be on the cards after investors appear to have already priced in a certain degree of pessimism in the back end of last week. From a technical perspective, the dollar index extended up through the monthly pivot at 92.72. Now at a uh, retesting the 93.20 area, <clears throat> as any pullbacks now are supported into the 92.85 zone, look for a further extension up into the target area of 93.70 to uh, 94.19. This is going to be a key test for the dollar as this will be technical area that bears will look to reset short positions and, and try and take the dollar lower. If, however, we fail to find significant resistance there, then I'd look for the dollar to extend up to test uh, pivotal 94.70 zone. At this stage, only a loss of the trendline support now coming in at the 92 level would suggest that the dollar has topped and that we are going to explore lower prices. Moving to the Eurozone. September ECB meeting marked a small win for Hawks as policymakers finally caught up with the reality and modestly reduced the pace of asset purchases. That was, however, largely priced in by the market and the euro failed to see any material benefit. After all, the overall policy stance of the ECB remains firmly on the dovish side and markets are reasonably reluctant to see last week's move as the first step in a sustained policy normalisation. And there are no clear data drivers really in the Eurozone uh, in the week ahead. And it's all, all focused really for the Euro this week is going to be the dollar counterpart on the 22nd of September. So from a technical perspective, the Euro uh, broke down through the uh, monthly pivots at the 1790 handle. Now look for a test of monthly range support down to 1673. But whilst any bounces are now contained by the monthly pivot, I'm actually looking for price to extend down into the major equality objective at 116.28 and the projected descending trend channel support coming in at 115.80. That's going to be a key test for the euro and from there we could see a more meaningful relief rally getting us back up into the trend channel resistance of 118. At this stage only a loss of this 115.80 support would be of significant concern and then we would be looking for an extension lower down to challenge 114.30 as the next downside objective. In the UK, uh, the pound was little touched after some softer than expected growth data um, out last week and uh, also saw quite contained impact from BOE Governor Andrew Bailey's uh, cautiously optimistic comments earlier last week. However, as we get closer to the BOE's policy announcement on the 23rd of September, selling sensitivity to domestic data drivers may increase, even more so as this week's calendar includes pretty high frequency data. I suspect that jobs figures on Tuesday will be a more important release compared to CPI numbers on Wednesday, as a bounce higher in August inflation 
will be mostly due to base effects and a short-term CPI swings are playing a secondary role in driving BOE's decisions uh, compared to the longer-term projections. Later in the week, we'll also see retail sales in focus. From a technical perspective, uh, Sterling is testing this support zone at 137.20. If we lose that area, then we look for a test down into the 136.80. But ultimately, whilst any bounces are contained by the monthly pivot here at 137.70, we actually look for an extension lower down to test the key uh, 136 support zone where we could see a more meaningful bounce. At this stage, only a loss of the monthly projected range support at 135.50 would be a significant bearish development and open up an equality objective down at 133.30 as the next downside objective for Sterling. <coughs> The drop in 10-year U.S. Uh, year yields back to the 128 level amid generally uh, grim market sentiment into the close on Friday uh, saw the uh, dollar-yen fall below the, uh, the 110 handle, but hopes of a more relaxed U.S.-China relationship uh, saw those yields tick back up and the yen shed some of its uh, more recent gains. Any improvements on this topic should continue to hit the yen harder than the dollar. Rate strategists see the balance of risks uh, skewed for a continuation in the 10-year uh, yield into next week with a chance for it to retest the 137 monthly highs. Accordingly, that should be supportive for the dollar yen. From a technical perspective, we look uh, for in terms of, sorry, the data uh, out next week in terms of Japan is pretty limited. We've got PPI, uh, machine orders and trade numbers, and they're likely to have less of an impact again more focus is going to be on the FMC on Friday. So from a technical perspective, Dolian held that support zone. Uh, uh, long positions warranted from there. We're now up into the pivot cluster of the high volume lows here at this uh, 110 handle. Really need to get up into uh, a test of the dis descending trend line resistance coming up 110.30. Uh, if we can get through there, then we look for a move up into monthly range resistance projected at 111.13. And then any pullbacks that hold the 11020 zone of support should set the stage for a move higher to test projected ascending trend line resistance coming at 112.40. And finally, down under in Australia, the RBA delivered what could be considered as dovish tapering uh, last week, while the bank went ahead with plans to reduce asset purchases to 4 billion. Australian dollars per week and extended the no tapering horizon, saying the current pace of purchases will be kept unchanged until February 2022. Despite an initial spike in the Aussie, the currency then fell in the session and closed the week actually as the one of the weakest performers in the G10 space. An improvement in market sentiment around the US-China relationship has provi did provide some help to the overexposed antipodeans and is surely a factor that may ease pressure on the currency as we head into this week. At the same time, iron ore has been unable to continue its recovery this week and uh, remain of the view really that the more sell-offs in the commodities space are a very material really, uh, risk to the Aussie. On the data side, Australia's jobs data will be closely watched as they will provide an important gauge of how the how much economic drag has been generated by the spread of the Delta variant in the country. Here, worse than expected data may push markets to price in another delay in the RBA's policy normalisation plans and offset any benefit from a potential stabilisation in risk sentiment next week. It will also be worth monitoring. RBA Governor Philip Lowe speaks on Tuesday. So from a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar closed a week on Friday with the general market also in risk sentiment very uh, very weak into the close. So any support that we find now on pullbacks into the one, uh, sorry, the 73.70 area uh, should see another round of selling, ultimately looking for at least a test of monthly range support, 71.50, and then into the prior lows here at 71. At this stage, really only a close above the descending trend line resistance coming at 74.20 would suggest that uh, we could be exploring higher prices. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 20th of September. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.